Well, hello, our fellow friends, fellow neighbors, and our fellow shining stars. Our next trolley stop is here, and our next trolley stop is now. Welcome back to another all new episode of PR from the Hearts Neighborly Reviews Bookcast. To be precise, we have reached episode number 28. That is the 28th trolley stop here at the Neighborly Reviews Bookcast as part of PR from the Hearts summer reading season. My name is John Massalonis, the manager here at PR from the Heart and the co-host of the Neighborly Reviews Bookcast. Joined as always each and every month. You know him and you love this little guy as Little Forest. You also remember our other co-host as the beloved Mr. McFeely on the long-running children's television program, Mr. Rogers Neighborhood. We know him and we love him as David Newell. David, I know that this is one of our favorite times of the year where the little ones say farewell to school for a few months and they get to enjoy summer vacation. And so we're really looking forward to sharing some neighborly reviews of some great children's books over the course of the three months that are June, July, and August for not only children, but also for parents and for educators as they are getting ready to enjoy the summer and prepare sooner than we realize for the forthcoming back to school season. It's great to reconnect back with you, my friend. Thank you. We have two books to uh, talk about today. And uh, you have a few more housekeeping chores to announce, then we'll jump into it all, right? This is, this is, <laughs> this is the housekeeping, the homework that is fun here on the Neighborly Reviews Bookcast. First things first, of course, as you all well know, David is now back in Pittsburgh. I am back in San Diego. So if you are longtime subscribers to PR From The Hearts YouTube channel, if you're longtime neighbors here at the Neighborly Reviews Bookcast. And of course, if you enjoyed our two most recent trolley stops, we want to, as the themes of this particular Neighborly Reviews Bookcast episode, we're going to be talking about gratitude amongst other things. We want to express our gratitude to our friends and neighbors at the Center for Media Innovation in downtown Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania on the campus of Point Park University. They were very kind enough to be able to facilitate our two in-studio episodes of the Neighborly Reviews Bookcast, again, at the Center for Media Innovation at Point Park University for the months of April and May. If you are new to the program, David and I, we take the time to deliver the newest heartfelt reviews from the newest children's books from who we refer to as the shining stars in the kid lit community. Some of the authors that are the top award winning and best selling children's authors who are published and those rising stars who are self published, who are on the rise in the world of children's literature. And in the month of April, we had the opportunities to share and review Jim Price's newest installment of The Adventures of Harold from the Hood series, in addition to Annesley Hackathorn's Shenley O'Doodle, Half Golden, Half Poodle. So in addition to sharing and reviewing both of those books, Jim and Annesley were kind enough to stop off in our neighborhood at the Center for Media Innovation in downtown Pittsburgh. So that episode is now available in addition to, that's right, Middle Forest, I know that you're excited as well for episode number 27 of the Neighborly Reviews Bookcast, where David and I have the opportunities to be joined in studio at the Center for Media Innovation, all the way from Costa Rica, the author-illustrator duo behind Maleku's gift, Dr. Jill Reed and Patricia Custer. So for episode number 27 of the Neighborly Reviews Bookcast, we have the opportunities to share and review Maleku's gift and also interview Dr. Jill and Patricia in studio. So if you are new to the program, you have the opportunities to subscribe to PR From The Hearts YouTube channel. That is one of the many ways that you can pledge your support here for us at the Neighborly Reviews Bookcast. And you can not only watch episodes number 26 and 27, but all of our two plus years worth of trolley stops along the way as well too. And going back to our early days at the Neighborly Reviews Bookcast, we are still proud and honored to be able to pledge our support. Reading is Fundamental Pittsburgh is the Pittsburgh chapter of the national non-for-profit children's literacy organization, the largest in the country that provides children's books, developmental resources, and literacy tools for children that come from low-income families. And of course, as David, you still reside in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. That is where, of course, 
Mr. Rogers Neighborhood was filmed for many years at WQED, one of the ways that we pledge our support for our friends and neighbors, especially for the children, parents, and families of Pittsburgh, along with pledging our support for Reading is Fundamental Pittsburgh, is to be able to share the wonderful work that they are doing with their great organization here each and every month on the Neighborly Reviews Bookcast. So we encourage all of you to pledge your support how you feel guided to do so, as we like to say here at the Bookcast, no donation is too large, no donation is too small. You can head on over to riffpittsburgh.org slash donate. And again, you can pledge your support because David, especially during the summer season, this is the time when little ones have the opportunities to relax quite a bit even more so, and they can enjoy other things that they don't have the opportunities to enjoy during the school year but it is still very important to be able to have reading at the forefront during the summer so that little ones really can get the leg up leading into the forthcoming back to school season. That's right, and the two books we have are designed, I think, for preschoolers through early elementary, wouldn't you say? That is uh, the, the two books we're about to talk about. So uh, they can get books out of the library too in this in the summer. And I hope these two books, Bluey the Happy Little Bluebird, we're gonna talk about those two books. Did you have anything you wanted to add before we go into the talking about them? Other than the trolley, of course, we rack up mileage, as you all know, here at the Neighborly Reviews Bookcast. So the trolley heads from San Diego, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, to the beautiful city of Houston, Texas. And that is where we will find one of the shining stars at PR from the Heart, mindset coach and children's author. She's also a fantastic mother as well, Sarah D'Ambrosio. She has written her debut children's book series entitled Bluely the Happy Bluebird. And David, one of the many reasons that I really love the work of Sarah is that, especially with children's books, we're not here to reinvent the wheel. Children's books, the most, the most beautiful children's books are simplistic at their mm -hmm. core, yet they're powerful in their delivery at the same point in time. And especially when we think of the summer, we tend to think of going outside and we tend to think of seeing the birds flying all around. And this is not just a bird, this is a very special bluebird that is bluely the happy bluebird. So the two books that we are going to be sharing here on episode number 28 of the Neighborly Reviews bookcast Bluely the Happy Bluebird, a book about friendship and self-love, and Bluely the Happy Bluebird, a book about gratitude and self-love. And David, before we begin talking about the books, I just really appreciate the fact that Sarah honored the call in her heart to be able to talk about these particular messages because we live in a society, unfortunately, where people have difficulties loving themselves and learning to love themselves on a deeper level, whether that be children, whether that be adults. It's very easy with the society that we live in to think about what's not going right or the things that aren't in our life. And this is why having an important gratitude practice to take the time to be grateful for what you have in your life and who you have in your life, you have so much more to be grateful for. And also, the importance of friendship. I forget who actually said the phrase, as long as you have one good friend, that's all that you really need. I obviously have little Forrest on my end of things. <laughs> he is my furry friend, but it's there are people, unfortunately, David, that not only walk around feeling unloved, but they don't even think that they have friends. Or if they have one friend, they may feel that they may not have enough friends. So, you know, children, as parents and caregivers and custodians of little ones, there's many different messages that we're doing our part to be able to teach to our children. If there really are pillars for little ones growing up so that they can learn to navigate life, but to really also enjoy life, really at the forefront of those pillars, friendship, gratitude, and self-love. That's, again, one of the many reasons why I really connect with these books, not only as a 41 year old man, but my inner child as well too, not only as a publicist for children's authors, but whether you are a, whether you have a little one or you're still doing your part to strengthen the connection with the little one inside of you, being able to talk about these messages is very important. I'm really glad that we're doing that here in episode number 28 of the Neighborly Reviews podcast. 
So we'll jump into the second book, actually, of her. The first book, we'll, we'll do second. We'll do the second book first. And that one is Bluey, the Happy Little Blue Bird, uh, about friendship and self-love, as you said. You know, Sarah wrote a, a preface. And many years ago, uh, she was in Peru. And I don't know if she's from Peru, but she was in Peru uh, at a friend's house. And uh, that's where she learned that bluebirds are a symbol of good luck. And she thought, Sarah, well, good things were coming her way. And we'll get to that later on in the story. Well, after that day, she started noticing bluebirds. Uh, she moved to Las Vegas and she thought, oh, I'll never see a, a, a bluebird in Las Vegas. And wouldn't you know, there, she noticed a bluebird on the back of her son's school bus. There's a company that makes school buses called the Bluebird Good Bus morning. Company. And I think they have a symbol and she noticed it there. And one even showed up in her backyard and uh, she believes that she has a strong connection with bluebirds so that's why she decided to uh, include them in her children's book well this book begins with bluey greeting the reader from her cozy nest where she likes to nap and enjoy the view and sing songs and she uh, is around a lot of her friends and i like this i like books that talk directly to the uh, the reader it sort of breaks the fourth wall i like when the book asks questions and this book does well uh on the next page she said can i ask you something this is bluey asking the reader do you want to be my friend that's what bluey says and then she asks, uh, oh would you like to know a secret i'm a happy bluebird but when i'm sad I don't have many friends to play with. That's what makes Louie a little sad. I don't have that many friends to play with. But when I think of my friends, I'm happy again. So it's easy to feel happy when you use your imagination. And I think this is Sarah's point, encouraging children to use imagination in everyday life. Uh, for instance, this is Bluey saying this. When I'm sad, I close my eyes and take deep breaths and think about happy times. And it seems to work for Bluey because on the next page, she says, I feel happy again and life is awesome and I am awesome. And that's what Bluey says. So it's working for her. Oh, well, you know, she loves playing with her friend Sammy is a squirrel and uh, sammy is fast and sneaky that's how she describes sam sammy is uh, uh oh she likes to play hide and go seek as squirrels probably want to do and uh, but today is sammy's birthday in the course of the story it's sammy's birthday and bluey wants to surprise sammy with her favorite cake which is a, a nut flavored cake it's mm -hmm. obvious that a squirrel would like a nut flavored cake. Then Bluey asked the reader, do you think she would like a cake or maybe just a song? What do you think? She asked the reader. Well, apparently the readers chose the cake as I imagine most readers would choose the cake. And, and uh, she thanks, Bluey thanks them for helping her decide what to give Sammy for her birthday. Well, on the next page, it has Bluey saying that it is nice to have friends who love you no matter what. And it makes Bluey feel like jumping so high. And then she asks the reader, I am a happy bluebird. And do you know why? Because life is awesome and we are all awesome. In a way, this is feeling good about yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, encouraging the reader to, to feel good about yourself. Remember, friends, think about what, you, what makes you feel good when you feel sad. Again, it's going back to sort of using your imagination. Uh, and then Bluey, remi Bluey reminds the reader, 
about breathing. Breathing is a great exercise to practice every day and make sure your body feel good. And on the next page, uh, Bluey is shouting out in big letters, super duper good. When you feel sad, just know things, good things are coming your way. And that is referring back to what Sarah felt in Peru. She felt about the bluebirds. She said, it's, good. it's a good symbol of good luck. I'm seeing bluebirds and good things are coming my way. Well, good things are coming the reader's way, inspired by Sarah and Bluey. Keep breathing and change your thoughts to positive. And the last two pages, this is a, a short book, has Bluey reminding the reader that she is unique and special. And so are you, she tells the reader. So are you. Life is awesome and you are awesome. And on the last page, Louie is surrounded by all her friends, the squirrel and some other birds and a lot of the forest animals. And I like the, the last page because it's uh, all the friends are there, Louie's in the center, and the big happy sun is shining on all of them. Mm -hmm. And I hope I didn't block my the screen too much with my notes, did I? Oh no, the trusted notes, especially at the very end of the book, David, I'm really glad that you communicated this because it is such a, it, it's beautiful imagery when you, when you read a book and you're on the last page, you really want to have a snapshot, a keepsake that you can always go back to because that's before you, you close Bluely the Happy Bluebird, a book about friendship and self-love. That's the last thing that you see. And as you articulated, huh? there is Bluely surrounded by all of her friends saying life is awesome and you are awesome. Um, and it's so interesting because, you know, you you spent a lot of time with Mr. Rogers, of course, in Mr. Rogers neighborhood. And there was that in a, in a very subtle but very meaningful way at the very end of each episode of Mr. Rogers neighborhood, he would always say that I like you. I love you, that you're special just the way that you are before he walked outside and you know went on with the rest of his day that was his parting shot that was his way of saying goodbye for now to the kids and that's yeah. what, and bluely through sarah sarah through bluely and bluely through sarah are really communicating that same message in their own special way as well yeah. and i don't think you can say it enough to children how unique each person is and that's what fred rogers said every day there, and he also added uh, there's no one exactly like you you are special and then the way that's what sarah is doing through uh, her her bluey series that she started and it's it's a charming little book and again as i said i think basically it's for preschoolers and first and second graders would you say that would ages, be the yeah i would say i would say ages three through seven and it's interesting because when i first saw bluely even though bluely is a bluebird you know who came to mind was X the Owl. Because, oh, that's right. <laughs> because, because X the Owl was also blue. So even though one is a blue bird and one is an owl, you can see that there's that the same heart, even some of the same energy of the characters that you find, you would see, you, you know, there's if uh, there were other um, creatures that were inside of the world of the, the, the village, uh, the, the world of make-believe, you would the neighborhood of make believe. You would be able to see, like I could envision the squirrel, or I could envision Bluely, right? Like if you look real closely, uh -huh. you could easily see them, see them there. So again, this is just one of the things that I forget what kind of talk that it was, but I, I think at some point before he passed, someone asked Mr. Rogers, like, "Do you want someone to be like the next you?" And he always encouraged people to be the best version of themselves, that the world didn't need Fred Rogers part two or part three, that these kinds of messages needed to continue to be shared for generations and generations to come. And so Sarah is doing her part in her own way to be able to keep the memory and the legacy and the lineage of Mr. Rogers alive while still being Sarah D'Ambrosio in the process. Well, that's right. You know, and you can go back to this book or back to both of these books because uniqueness and feeling good about yourself doesn't happen magically. No. It's a process, I think. And each time 
a, a child would would read this book or have the book read to them it just re encourages that uh, growth of feeling good about yourself uh, fred rogers had a song that he sung a lot on the program called you're growing you know in each day is progress and i think sarah in a way is doing the same thing with uh, uh, encouraging children to feel you feel good about themselves and and i think this book uh, does that but i think i think it's also a good book to read again and again they have it in your child's library to pull it out every so often and maybe could ever if, if a child happens not feeling feeling sad maybe that day maybe it's a good book to to pull out and and, and address that topic i so, agree and, and and in fact one of my favorite passages in the book when bluely is almost kind of like doing like a like a, a i don't really want to call it a split but she's kind of going like this she's got her her, her 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 feet up in the air and she's just like super excited and she says it feels so good having friends who love you no matter what and each of her friends you see the uh the raccoon you see the deer you see the owl you see the fox you see the rabbit they're all in little hearts a really good activity that i encourage from this book before we dive into the pages momentarily of a book about gratitude and self-love if you're a parent or if you're a grandparent and you're spending time with your little ones and let's say your little ones feeling down to take the time to take out a piece of construction paper or a piece of regular paper and put a picture of the little one in the center and then to draw some hearts or even cut out some hearts from construction paper and then take pictures of the of the special people that are in their lives and put them inside the hearts so that you're mm -hmm. you're having your own version of this so then you can look and say there's um you know grandma jane or um uncle rich or um you know my best friend mike right you can you can see those people that are in those hearts and then that's something that the little one can put on the refrigerator they can put on their bedroom door so when they're feeling low they're feeling down you're right kids need this continued reinforcement that then they're able to be able to say, oh, wait a minute, here are these top 10 people that are in my life and I'm so grateful that they're reminding me of how special and how loved that I am. So again, yeah. having having the positive repetition totally helps. And then having a very endearing character. This is one of yes. the things that I wanted to mention, not only about a book about friendship and self-love, but the book that we'll be diving into momentarily, a book about gratitude and self-love, Oftentimes, kids will gravitate to just a sweet, adorable character. That's why children for many generations loved and still love in their own unique way now, Daniel Striped Tiger. Because right. he was this, um, he he embodied all of us, how how we, we, we wanted to be, how we were loving and kind and compassionate. Maybe we, we wanted to be more courageous, but we had our own fears and insecurities. So the fact that Bluely is communicating these messages, I feel that kids can really understand them more just because of the relatability of Bluely as a character. Well, you're right. And oh, and, and you mentioned the, the, the final page a few moments ago. And what that final page reminds me of, there's Bluey with all, all the forest friends. It reminds me of a curtain call in a in a play, in a way. <laughs> it, it, I, I'm, I'm very, I, I love to go to theater and I always enjoy the curtain calls to, to show the actors the appreciation. And mm -hmm. in a way, that reminded me of a curtain call. Uh, so children and families can have many curtain calls by reading that book over and over and seeing Bluey sure. and, and learn the lessons. And as I said before, I think that by pulling it out every so often and reading it reinforces and uh, it uh, it teaches in steps i think but it's a very good book for that age group so especially the preschoolers it sets it early on but a preschooler has to have it read to them but i think a first and second graders are maybe are learning to read at that that point i'm not quite sure at any rate my point being, <laughs> that's a good book to uh, encourage uniqueness and self-love. 
And so we go now from for the second one. <laughs> perfect, perfect transition. So, of course, the trolley is going to be staying in Houston, Texas, because the other installment that is now available in the Bluely the Happy Bluebird series is a book about gratitude and self-love. So, again, we, we really see how friendship and self-love are related. And then we see how gratitude and self-love are related. And at the end of the day, how all three of these are all related together. So Bluely has another magical story to be able to share. So let us dive inside the pages of Bluely the Happy Bluebird, a book about gratitude and self-love, also written by Sarah D'Ambrosio. Yes, and according to Sarah, this book was her first children's book. And one morning, a copy of the book was delivered to her house. This is in the, the preface. And uh, her family was delighted. And in the book, she mentions her connection to bluebirds. And after showing her family the book, her sister-in-law asked to see family pictures that were taken in Peru. So I think originally she must have spent time in Peru. At any rate, there were family pictures taken in Peru. And a family member said, show me some of those pictures, Sarah. Well, while looking through the, the pictures, Amy, who asked the question, her sister-in-law, noticed that one of the photos of Sarah's dad was taking, taken many years ago. And, and her dad was in his early 20s and was holding a bird in a jungle of Peru. And Sarah wrote that the, the photo was over 60 years old and the bird that her dad was holding was a bluebird. Now, Sarah never noticed that before, and she began to cry, and I can understand that. What a coincidence, and she noticed that her dad was holding a bluebird. On the same day, the, she saw the photo of her dad holding the bluebird on the same day that Bluey, the happy bluebird, arrived from the publisher. Now, that's a, that's a coincidence. You, you can't plan that, I don't think. <laughs> nope, I, I I really feel that there's there's times in our life where we can look back and just say that, you know, sometimes people will use the phrase divine timing. Some people will just say perfect timing. Some people will say, uh, you know, I'm at the right place at the right time. Some people just need to see that sign from above, so to speak. So whether you're religious or spiritual or find yourself maybe a little bit in, in, in between the two, there was definitely... Uh, uh, a smile from beyond, from her father, no, you know, reminding her that yeah. she was on on point and on purpose with what it is that she's doing for children through the, Blue, it, the Happy Bluebird series. It's it just a coincidence of her friend, where her sister-in-law asking to see family pictures, and there's her father holding a bluebird in Peru. Well, she dedicates the book to her dad, and his uh, his name is uh, Dimiteo. That's right, and. I wrote it down and I tried to say it phonetically, but uh, it's a lovely name. And that, that was her father's name. And uh, he always taught her the power that we all have within ourselves. Uh, she, she said she's grateful for the picture and that inspired her to write the, the first Bluey book about uh, gratitude and self-love. Well, the book opens with the illustration of Bluey saying, hello, friends. Again, it's right to the audience, which I like. I want to tell you something that makes me feel good and happy. That's what Bluey is saying to the, the reader. Uh, Bluey said it's about gratitude. She goes on to tell the reader that on Sunday morning, she woke up earlier than usual. She was thirsty and was on her way to the kitchen when she saw her mom sitting in the living room. And, and Blue, Louie tried to keep quiet because her mom was writing something. She didn't know what it was, what her mom was writing. Since Louie didn't want to disturb her mom, she decided to go back to bed. But on her way up the stairs, she hit her knee on the wall and she screamed so loudly that it scared her mom. Well, Mom, I didn't mean to scare you. Uh, are you okay, Bluey? Why are you up so early? <laughs> and, oh, I hit my knee on the wall. I wanted to get a drink of water, but I didn't want to interrupt you because you were writing a letter. Well, here's where the, the gratitude starts. Uh, Mom said she wasn't writing a letter. She was writing 
my gratitude list. Her mother was writing my gratitude list. Blue asked, well, what's a gratitude list? And mom said, she comes sit beside me and I'll tell you. And Bluey's mom said that every morning she likes to write down everything she's grateful for. You know, and that, in a way, that's a good thing. That's a good habit to get into. Now we're going to miss some mornings, but just you know, just to scribble down two words might be helpful. You know, this these children's books sometimes can help adults too. Hundred percent. So yeah, her mom said it feels good to start your day being grateful for the things we have. We sometimes take things for granted, and that that is so true. I'd like to I'd like to start my day that way," said Bluey, and her mom showed her how to make. A gratitude list, and feel the gratitude as you write, write each word down. And that's interesting too. As you put that word down, feel that gratitude. It's interesting that all these facets that come out. I'm even seeing more as I'm telling it back to you now of what you can tell children as you're reading the book to them. At any rate,、uh, Bluey went back to bed but couldn't sleep. She was too excited about making her own gratitude book, but she didn't know where to start. Well, on the next page, Louie asks the reader. Here she goes to the reader again.、Uh, what are you grateful for, friends? Looking right to the to the camera, to the person on the reader.、Uh, Louie says that she's grateful for her family and friends. That's number one, and number two.、Uh, She's grateful for her eyes because she can see the sky and beautiful rainbows, and my nose so I can tell when food is ready. She's grateful for that, and grateful for this beautiful world that I'm a part of. That's so positive to tell、mm -hmm. children. You know, be grateful. This beautiful world you're you're a part of. And Bluey is grateful she's alive and breathing, so she can have another chance to enjoy life. And I'm grateful for my body; it is perfect the way it is. Well, and that's good to have that self love again. After thinking all these grateful thoughts, she said she is getting sleepy,、uh, and she still has a few more hours to enjoy her cozy bed. So. The next to last page shows Bluey standing beside a big thank you sign, thinking, or thanking that is the reader for being her friends. That's what I like too. She's standing beside him. It's just Bluey thanking the reader for being her friends. And the last page has a wonderful illustration of just Bluey. Waving to the reader, saying, "I'm grateful to my friends," and that's how, how the book ends. But、uh, there are、uh, some comments on the back cover、uh, that Bluey enjoys teaching other children how to be happy, and that's what I think the book gives those gives those. Oh, it's not instructions, but that gives those hints.、Mm -hmm. But I think the the parent reading to a younger child can reinforce that too, and you can stop at any point and reinforce those hints too. I think. And David, you you beautifully connected with the heart of the story because, and you talked about this earlier on, is that there are many adults, many of us that walk around, as strange as it sounds, we don't know how to be happy. Then maybe in life we had more experiences that were filled with more pain or sorrow or suffering, and we need to retrain our mind and our nervous system. We we really need to believe that we can be happy. And this is again, it's it, it's very simple, but it really makes a big difference. Oftentimes people think that you have to have a million dollars in your bank account in order to be happy. Now it definitely helps if you do have some more financial flexibility and for freedom. The simplest of things in life, you you know, out here in San Diego. Now that the weather, I I think that people call it here in San Diego the May Gray. So I I don't. There were not many like beautiful sunny days here. There was more grayness last month here in San Diego. 
I can walk out and of course, literally in just a few days, we're going to be having the summer solstice, which is the longest day of the year. It's the first official day of summer, even though for us here at the Neighborly Reviews Bookcast, summer starts on Memorial Day for us. <laughs> but watching the sunrise and the sunset, you can be happy for that. When you're outdoors, you, you, you're, you're more connected to the sun, vitamin D, you have the abilities to feel happy. One of the things also tied into to gratitude that I that I actually uh, want to give one of my uh, one of my dear friends Ken some uh, a, a little courtesy to this. So I don't have a gratitude jar. I have a victory bucket. I have a victory bucket, and at the end of every day, I have post-it notes that I have here in my hand, and I will write down. So, for example, for today, I will be writing recorded episode number 28 of the neighborly reviews bookcast with david newell and i'm going to fold up the 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 pink post-it note and i'm going to put it in my victory bucket and when i take a look david there's dozens there's dozens of victories dozens of gratitude and even just the way in which i shifted the phrase gratitude because when you build up your gratitudes you eventually have the victories and every day in life we're not going to win the lottery or have our our wife or our girlfriend give birth to our firstborn child. You're not going to move into a brand new house every day. There's those things you celebrate during the course of your life, but it's important to really focus on the little things because those little things, whether it be a little kiss on the cheek from Little Forest, a lick to the face, or whether <laughs> it be having a delicious bowl of oatmeal, or whether it be, you know, remembering the friends that you have, right? You know, remembering one of my recent trips to Buffalo and Pittsburgh, where the opportunities to spend some time with you and my dear friend, Dennis DiPaolo, from Emilio DiPaolo's restaurant in Buffalo. Those are the keys. Those are the pillars. And this is why, again, if out of any of the books that we've ever shared and reviewed on the Neighborly Reviews bookcast, I feel that these are something that are equally meant for children and equally meant for adults, especially as of right now. Oh, I, I agree. And, and I jotted something else down. It, uh, based on the book, if you learn to love yourself, it opens the door to loving and appreciating others. And if you feel good about yourself, the numbers and letters of life are much easier to learn. You know, I sometimes wonder when uh, children have trouble with maybe numbers and letters, and is it emotional too? Do they not feel good about themselves? So the num they're not learning as easily as they could. You know, there's some there's something there. I'm not a psychologist, but if but it goes back to loving yourself and feeling good about who you are. And I think you you may be able to learn easier that way. I'm not sure. Uh, and if you're not happy with who you are, it may be one of the reasons that learning may be difficult for some children. That's another uh statement I got out of, out of the book too. Uh, oh, and here's one more thing I wrote down. Is Sarah's first book is certainly an excellent book, Lesson of Gratitude and Feeling Good Reader by Bluey. And as I was reading it, I was thinking, boy, I'm a lot of these things are, are being reinforced with me. I, I, uh, you know, I, I always wonder, Story about uh, Mr. Rogers was in um, India, television producers, and they they got together and they wrote a script about uh, all these producers came up with a script and they produced it in India. And there was a, a doorbell that had to ring, and somehow it didn't ring. Somebody said, "Oh, don't worry about it. It's just a children's program." And Fred said, that's my point. It's a children's program and we have to do the best we can do for children. And children's books are like that too. There's so much packed into these, these pages of Sarah's books Agreed. that are, that are life lessons. And that's why I said, it's uh, told to the reader by Bluey the Bluebird. <laughs> And it's at, at the very end of, on the back cover of a book about gratitude and self-love, 
learn with Bluey the Happy Bluebird and discover the beautiful world we are a part of and how amazing we are. Keep smiling. There's one of my favorite songs of the 80s was a collection of beautiful hearts, beautiful souls, and beautiful voices. You had Elton John, you had Dionne Warwick, you had Gladys Knight, and you had, I believe it was Stevie Wonder. And they would say the song, that's what friends are for. And there is uh -huh. the part of the song that says, keep smiling, keep shining knowing you can always count on me. So that reminder of keep smiling, that even if it isn't necessarily a bright day, it might be a bright day in the sky, but you might feel a little bit gloomy inside. The important thing is to continue to believe in yourself, continue to believe that things are going to continue to get better. And again, having these reinforcements, one of the great things about children's books, specifically as well with Blue the Happy Bluebird for the series, is that these are books you can always go back to. They're very short, but yet they're very powerful reads. So again, if you need to have that reinforcement, whether you as an adult or whether your little one needs to have that reinforcement, it's just like little force potty training. Repetition, <laughs> repetition will get you there. And eventually your little one will be further along than where he or she is as of right now. We encourage all of you, our listeners and viewers, our friends and neighbors, and of course our fellow shining stars you can head on over to sarah's official website which we have included in the description below in addition to amazon.com if that is your preferred online vehicle of your choosing you can purchase your copies of the bluely the happy bluebird series a book about friendship and self-love and a book about gratitude and self-love one of the many ways that you can pledge your support for sarah is to leave a five-star review that is, again, one of the many ways that you can not only pledge your support for Sarah, but to let her know that she is doing wonderful and much needed work for children, parents, families, educators, and those who love great children's books. If you are an educator and would love to be able to facilitate a virtual author school visit with Sarah leading into the forthcoming 2023-2024 back to school season or as part of the 2023-2024 school year, you could connect with Sarah via her official website as well. And if you head on over to your local library or your favorite children's or independent bookstore, remember to make these recommendations. If you don't see the Bluey the Happy Bluebird series, remember, children's and independent bookstores and local libraries they also are the pillars of our community so just as friendship gratitude and self-love are the pillars in our lives and the lives of our children by doing your part to make these suggestions for your local library your local children's bookstore your local independent bookstore the energy of these books and the physical books in their entirety will be able to be housed in these uh, in these institutions of higher learning, as we like to say here, the pillars of, of the communities for, for many, many, many days and weeks and months and hopefully years to come as well too. So David, when we hear the trolley, we know that that is time to go. So this was a yeah. very special two book book cast shining the spotlight on one shining star from Houston, Texas, who's doing such great work for, for our children. David, what is it that you learn? Was it one thing specifically that you learned? Was it a series of things that you learned? Or maybe even was it some things that you remembered through the course of our book cast today versus things more that you learned? Well, I, I think it was reinforced. I think I knew it, but you were mentioning smiling earlier, you know, but smiling really comes from within. Mm -hmm. You can smile, but what Sarah is doing is teaching that self-love. And when you smile, it's coming from within right. and going out to your friends or acquaintances. I, I think that's very important. Just to smile, not feeling well, you know, smile though your heart is breaking is not what a, is not that good of a lesson. Some people have no choice but to do that but if you can learn to love yourself that smile is a comes right out and uh, and sarah's book is helping younger readers learn that so that's what that's what i got reinforced by by reading these books 
I hope that was a <laughs> that wasn't too complicated. No, no, and and, and yeah. I think again, you know, oftentimes in life we can tend to overcomplicate things. We can overcomplicate. We can overanalyze things, and especially not only for ourselves, not only for our own mental and our own emotional and our own spiritual health and for our own physical well-being, but also for that of our children. It's really about the simple things, the simple things that really mean the most. Remembering that you have, even if you have one good friend that is in your life, that is more than enough. That's more than many people, unfortunately, have to remember gratitude, and 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 not even just gratitude, but to to remember the fact that when you're grateful for what you have in your life, and who is in your life. You will always be when you can really get to that point when you say, "I'm grateful for what I have. I'm grateful for everyone in my life." It's and, and I, we encourage all of you. This is maybe what we'll call a neighborly reviews science experiment. Take the time between now and when we next join you in the month of July for episode number 29 of the Neighborly Reviews Bookcast, and to just take these next several weeks to focus on what's going right in your life, who you have in your life, what is what is all the gratitude that is in your life. And notice how then there is more that you will be blessed with back in return and in the process. And then lastly, self-love. It's where it begins. In order for you to be able to love others, it's important to be able to love yourself. And that's why Mr. Rogers was a huge proponent when when he said, "Love your neighbor and be kind to your neighbor." He always referred to starting with yourself first. Because when you love yourself more, when you can be kind to yourself more, then it's just a reflection. Just as you said, it's the smiling on the inside. All of that can be seen and felt and heard on the outside. Raise your hand if you have had fun on episode number twenty-eight of the Neighborly Reviews Bookcast. We see hands <laughs> from myself, hands from yeah. David, and yes, even though Little Force is actually resting under my feet, he is actually giving two paws up to the Bluey the Happy Bluebird series again a book about friendship and self-love and a book about gratitude and self-love they are now available you can purchase them through Sarah's official website you can also head on over to amazon.com if that's your preferred online vehicle of your choosing leave five star reviews for both a book about friendship and self-love and a book about gratitude and self-love that those are again ways that you can pledge your support for Sarah to let her know that she is doing wonderful and much needed work for children, parents, families, educators, those who love great children's books and those who really need to be reminded especially about self-love and gratitude and friendship. But again, we are just beginning our summer reading season here at PR from the Heart. So if you are a children's author and would like for David and I to be able to share your brand new children's book to deliver a heartfelt review, a neighborly review on a forthcoming edition of your new book, on a forthcoming edition of the Neighborly Reviews bookcast, you can head on over to our official website, which is prfromtheheart.com, or you can connect with us via any of our social media platforms that you now see on screen. Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, all at PR from the Heart. A little sneak preview. If you love the most recent episodes where David and I were in person, not the two squares on a screen, but when we were at the Center for Media Innovation, we are looking forward to heading back to the CMI studios in the month of September as we will be gearing up for more of the back to school season with our favorite friends and neighbors in Pittsburgh at Point Park University. So again, stay tuned for more details on those. But in between now and then, we have our summer reading season and we still have our July and our August bookcast between now and that point. If you are a children's or middle grade author and would love to be able to have myself and you connect together so that you can share your inspiring story and the release of your brand new children's book. We're, we're really looking forward to more episodes of PR from the Heart's children's book spotlight series. The reason why I'm mentioning this is because we are counting down to our five year anniversary celebration of the program, which is one of the longest running video podcasts in the Kidlet community. And we're also approaching our two hundredth episode. So that is one of the many ways that we can be of support to you. If you are a children's or middle grade author, you can connect with us if you are interested in being a future guest on the children's book spotlight series. 
And of course, we are fully immersed in our back to school season already at PR from the heart and soon we'll be shifting gears to our holiday season. Well, what does that mean? If you are a children's or middle grade author and you are looking for dedicated PR support to be able to share your inspiring story and the release of your new book with more parents, more educators, more caregivers, and to do that through the media. If you're interested in facilitating a book media tour in a city or cities of your choosing, if you're interested in facilitating a national book tour, if you're simply just wanting to facilitate one or two television interviews and see what that does for you, you can connect with us via our official website, prfromtheheart.com, and you can schedule your courtesy connection call and let us see how we can be of service to you. Of course, Little Forest wants me to remind all of you as he as he licks my ear that again, you can head on over to Sarah D'Ambrosio's official website, which we have included in the description below. You can also head on over to Amazon.com and purchase your copies again of Bluely the Happy Bluebird, a book about friendship and self-love and a book about gratitude and self-love. And of course, you can leave five-star reviews along the way to let Sarah know that she is doing wonderful and much needed work for children, parents, families, and educators, and those who love great children's books. Little Forest, do you have any messages for all of our friends and neighbors <laughs> if you're giving me a face wash over here? He is also reminding you, Little Forest is just a ball of love. He is reminding all of you that you are loved and that you are special just the way that you are. But before we officially close out episode number 28 of the Neighborly Reviews bookcast, of course, we always like to give a little thanks to someone that David spent quite a good number of years with, and that is one of our favorite neighbors, Mr. Rogers. He reminded us in his own way, whether it be through Mr. Rogers' neighborhood, whether it be through college talks and commencement speeches, library talks, just passing by to his fellow neighbors on the street in Pittsburgh when he was traveling through the country. And most notably, he actually did this through, um, his favorite three numbers. Somehow Mr. Rogers, as we like to say on the Neighborly Reviews bookcast, he must have met Ponce de Leon in a past life because somehow Mr. Rogers was 143 pounds. Somehow he connected with the fountain of youth. So there's one letter in I, four letters in love, and three letters in you. As David was very kind to spend some of his free time with us once again. And the same with Little Forest. We're reminding you of our three favorite numbers on the Neighborly Reviews bookcast in PR from the heart. That is 243. So there's two letters in we, four letters in love, three letters in you. As we're still connected with the heart and the spirit of Bluely the Happy Bluebird, we're reminding all of you of your inherent worth and your inherent value, that we like you, that we love you just the way that you are. That we are your friends, not only your neighbors, but that we are also your friends in the process. And this has been, again, a magical trolley stop, but fear not, there are many more magical trolley stops to come. If this message has inspired you, these messages, not only the messages of friendship and gratitude and self-love, not only the messages found within the Bluey the Happy Bluebird series, but also anything and everything that David, I, and, and Little Forest have communicated with you as part of this first trolley stop on the Neighborly Reviews bookcast of our summer reading season for the Neighborly Reviews bookcast, you can subscribe if you haven't had the opportunities to do so, to subscribe to PR From The Heart's official YouTube channel and to share this very special trolley stop that you have enjoyed. That is episode number 28 of the Neighborly Reviews bookcast. And again, special thanks to Sarah D'Ambrosio for allowing us to share and review her Bluely the Happy Bluebird series. Take the time, especially during the summer, to let your friends, your neighbors, your family, even if it's just a, a stranger, a passerby that you happen to see on the street, to let them know that there really is a lot to be grateful for, to be able to let them know that they truly are loved. You never know if you might land at making that person's day transforming their week or even saving their life. So for David Newell, for Little Forest, for myself, John Massalonis, we want to thank you for spending some time with us here in our neighborhood at the Neighborly Reviews Bookcast at PR From The Heart as part of our summer reading season. We want to thank you for your continued support of PR From The Heart, for your continued support of the Neighborly Reviews Bookcast. For your continued support of children's authors and illustrators, middle grade authors, 
for for wonderful people such as Sarah, who are continuing to do much needed work for children, parents, families, educators, and those who love great children's books, for your continued support of the pillars of our community, which are local libraries, children's and independent bookstores, and above all else, we want to thank you for helping us to walk home the children of the world, our fellow friends, our fellow neighbors, and our fellow shining stars. Goodbye for now. You want to wave goodbye, little force? It's time for the big finish. Goodbye. Yay. <laughs> <laughs>